This is a Gibson 1947 LG2 acoustic guitar that doesn't look too bad, but it needs a lot of work. The straight edge should land well above the bridge, so a neck reset is going to be necessary. The bridge too looks like it's very loose. There's a pickguard crack to deal with, but the main issue this guitar has is that all the braces are either loose, missing, or detached. I'm going to fix these by going through the sound hole and not taking the back off, which always leaves some kind of scar. Oh no, insects were living inside here. This bridge is so loose that I won't even need heat to take it off. Make sure it's loose all the way around. And then a little prying and off it comes. I'm going to remove the neck now. So I have to take the 15th fret off. Then I have to drill two holes to allow the steaming needle to be inserted. This is the heating blanket I use to loosen the fingerboard extension. I put this little weight on so that I have good contact. Then I use the sharpened uh, sp spatula and slowly work it under the heated up fingerboard extension. This is the steaming needle I use and the jig to inject the steam in and get that neck loose. The key is to take your time and let the steam do its work. A little jiggling helps too. And eventually, off comes the neck. I'll put the neck aside for now. I used this bent butter knife to take off the bridge plate. It came off easy with no heat at all. The original glue joint had failed. Here I'm preparing the popsicle brace, which goes underneath the fingerboard extension. Adding the glue, putting it in place, and then adding the clamps. This will not be easy to get these tone bars glued back in here. I modified these clamps so they don't slip off the braces as I try and tighten them. I'm going to make some effort to remove the old glue. I use these magnets as stops, so it makes it easy to put the brace in exactly the right place. Well, there's all the clamps in place. Here's a look on the inside. The main X brace being glued here, and a look on the inside too. This is the main upper brace being glued. To keep the area of the bridge more stable, I decided to make the new bridge plate a bit wider. And there it is clamped. Now I'm making a new back brace. And sanding it, getting it ready. This is potassium permanganate, and it ages the wood. Makes it look like it's old. Then I clamp it in position. Here's a shot up the inside. Another one. Here I'm gluing in a big spruce cleat to reinforce the pickguard crack. Normally you use spruce for a back center seam support, but this one was maple, so that's what I'm going to use. I use two magnets so that I can tell exactly how long to make this center seam support. And there it is glued in place. Another back support glued in place. And here I am removing some of the glue squeeze out. I've seen worse frets, but I think I'll replace these 75 year old ones. I have to heat them with the soldering iron. And then with the side nippers, work them carefully out. Then I'm going to do a bit of sanding, but just a little bit, not too much. 
This fret wire bending tool is a must have. After I get them all cut to length, I pound them in. And then add some super glue to just ensure that they don't come loose. Nip off all the little ends. And then this homemade file on a wooden block. And then a diamond stone takes off all the rough ends. Now I have to level the frets. Diamond block in use here. And then the three cornered file to crown them. Some steel wool to give them their final polish. And that's it. Now I'm making the new bridge out of this piece of Brazilian rosewood. And here a Wagner safety planer is used to thickness the blank. Then I true the edge and the side. And my drill press and a drum is used to make the little wings. Then this is used to radius the bottom of the blank. Then I'm spacing for the bridge pin holes and then drilling them. Here I'm preparing the bridge site. This is my clamping call I'll be using. Then it's all clamped in place and I'm removing some glue squeeze out. There it is. It's time to reset the neck and I do this by shaving wood off the back of the heel. Chisel has to be very sharp. I have to determine whether the neck is in alignment. I'm doing that here. Looks good. I have to glue mahogany shims onto the dovetail so that I can once again get it to fit tightly. I use a grease pencil so that I can tell where the high points are on the shims. Don't, don't forget to remove the grease pencil or the glue won't work properly. Here I do a final fitting of the neck and there it is glued in place. After carefully determining the position, I route the saddle slot. Look at that beautiful headstock. Then with some number nine Meguiars, which is fairly light abrasiveness, I polish this old lacquer. These tuners need some attention. First I'll nip off the old rotten buttons, then steel wool the plates, some dremeling, then you heat the shaft and you push on the new buttons and on the tuners go. I want to retain the original nut, but because the frets are now taller, I'm going to have to add a shim. And now I have to set the nut slots. Now I'm sizing and then reshaping the new bone saddle. Should be down to 330 seconds. I'm going to have to take a little more off. To make it look more vintage, I tone it with T. And there's the completed LG2 1947 project. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.